Well, let's go ahead and get started here. We have a great program for you today. And uh, what I'll do is talk through a little bit of Blue Zones and then uh, introduce our presenters and then we'll get started. So who's a fan of St. Patrick's Day? Yeah, I see a lot of green, this is good. My name is Andrew Anderson and I'm the engagement lead with Blue Zones Project Muscatine. And so how, how many of you have happened to read the Blue Zones book by any chance? Yeah, a couple, okay. Um, I've got a question for maybe you guys, anyone else as well here. So not, it's not a quiz, it's an opportunity to win something. So, or anyone. So let me explain just a little bit about Blue Zones. Uh, there were, Dan, Dan Butner was an author and with his team of researchers, they looked at places in the world where people lived longer and better. And they found five places where people lived on average about 10 years longer than most Americans. And it wasn't just that they lived longer, but those were active years, those were good years. Blue Zones Project is a, an approach to bringing the lessons from those places and implementing them in our community. So um, one of the interest, the big takeaway, the overarching takeaway from their research and what they found was those people didn't try to live longer. They weren't hitting the gym all the time or eating all kinds of supplements or doing all the things that, you know, people typically think of to maximize their life. Their surroundings nudged them towards healthy behaviors. Blue Zones Project is about setting up our, our homes and our, our surroundings, even our city in a way that just nudges us towards healthy behavior. So the city of Muscatine is working on connecting sidewalks and making roads and streets really accessible for bike and pedestrian traffic as well as vehicles. And we have an opportunity to set up our homes and surroundings. For example, I like this example. If you are sitting and watching TV, hopefully you don't watch too long, and you have a bowl of potato chips in front of you, what are you likely to be eating? But if you have a bowl of fresh fruit in front of you, what are you likely to be eating? Fresh fruit. Yeah. <laughs> Did someone say potato chips? <laughs> That's not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> so how we respond to our environment, and we can set it up so that the healthy choice is the most natural, the easiest choice. And so another thing they looked through in these, in these blue zones, they, they condensed the research and uh, came up with nine concepts or principles that all of us can incorporate into our lives. And those are, we call them the power nine. Now here's, here's the question. Does anyone think they could name all nine of those? No cheating. We have a handout and I didn't put it out and back for this reason. <laughs> so I'm gonna run back here quick and I've got a giveaway for anyone who, uh, who thinks they can give it a go. Dan Buettner's uh, book, Blue Zones, was really good. And this is called Thrive. This is a follow-up and it specifically talks about the kind of the internal environment or happiness and how, how satisfied you are with life. And it's really good. Does anyone want to give it a go? Try it. We'll, we'll make it a group effort here. Let's, let's start. Yeah. Move naturally. Good. Wine at five. Purpose. Plant slant. We're at four. Join a faith community, yeah. Belong. belong. Well, that's belong, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. We got some more. What about? Uh, yeah. We did one at five. We could do it again, Kay, if you want. Yeah. <laughs> Family, Family first. Family first and uh, downshift, relax. Yeah, good. I've got a cheat sheet here to make sure that I've got everyone here. We are at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's two more. Is there a bike one? Move naturally. That'd be yeah. That'd be close. There we go. Hara Hachibu. Eat till you're eighty percent full. Yeah, that's good. So there's one more, and it's it's similar to um, family first and belong. Know your purpose. Purpose. Yeah, connect it right tribe, we call it, or just what, what your social environment is. So let me just read through those again. We, we got them all, but it took a group effort. <laughs> all right, so we have downshift, which is, uh, you know, uh, relieving stress. Purpose, living with purpose. Plant slant, wine at five. Family first. 80% rule, or harahachibu. 
move naturally, right tribe, and belong. These are all evidence-based principles that contribute to, to living longer, and some of those are pretty significant. For example, living with purpose, if you're able to articulate your purpose, what, what makes you get up in the morning and live, research shows that's worth about seven years of extra life. It's, it's pretty significant. I have no idea how to give a chapter of this book to each person. <laughs> Kay was the first up, so I think you, yeah, you get it. You have this book? Yeah, so well, you can uh, pass it on. <laughs> so. There we go. That sounds good, yeah. <laughs> so what, what in, in plant slant there, the idea being to eat a more plant-based diet, it turns out that people in the world's blue zones, they're not all vegetarians. Uh, there, there are a lot, like the Loma Linda, California, the Adventist community, there are a lot of vegetarians there. Uh, but in general, uh, people in North America eat significantly more uh, meat than people in the world's blue zones do. So as a way to have a, a more balanced diet, we've been holding these plant-based cooking demos and learning about plant-based things. Today, we're doing green foods for St. Patrick's Day, and we have a good program uh, today. So there's partly the eating part, and then there's also the social environment. We really want to get to know people who want to eat healthy, and uh, you guys are a fun group. I encourage you to just make sure you ma meet some new people and, uh, yeah, make some new connections. So, all right, uh, let's do a few thank yous before we get started here. We want to thank Hy-Vee, and uh, Nancy Dew is a dietitian here at Hy-Vee. And uh, we want to thank hy our local hy -V for being such a good partner and making this space available and making Nancy Dew available. This has been really good. Uh, we also want to thank Wellmark, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and Healthways for partnering together, bringing Blue Zones Project to Iowa. We're getting a really big benefit from that. Uh, I want to point out a couple members of the cooking class committee that is uh, working with Blue Zones Project to offer these. Nancy Woodhouse here. And I pointed, Na I, I confused two names. <laughs> Angela Woodhouse, <laughs> Nancy Dew, Becky Schmertman uh, has just stepped out. Oh, Becky, right here, yeah. And Carol Swayze, and do I see any other members of our cooking committee here? Not right now. Okay, so there's a, there are a couple of other members, and they're working together to make these happen, so we want to thank you guys for for helping with all that. So, all right, I'll introduce our presenters, presenters for today. Uh, Angela Woodhouse, I got it right that time, is gonna start out. And then uh, Carol Swayze will uh, have, has a dish, and then Becky is gonna wrap up. So we'll, uh, we'll talk through it. This is a good chance, uh, you know, if you have a question while we're, while we're going through this, just ask it out. And uh, our presenters are mic'd, so they'll probably repeat the question, and then, uh, then we can talk about it. Finally, we want to thank East Campus. These guys are recording the programs today, and then uh, it'll be replayed so more, more folks in town can see this. So thank you, guys, and let's give these guys a hand to, to get started here. My name is Angela Woodhouse, like Andrew said, and the reason I'm up here, um, I have a website called New Paradigm Health Cookery, totally devoted to plant-based nutrition. I've been doing this since September, the website actually has been up since September 2011. I continually add new recipes. I have well over 200 recipes on the site. Uh, you will find with all of my recipes, there's no meat, no dairy, and I cook with no oil. Um, one of the reasons is it's the most optimal health-giving uh, diet there is. We kind of got started, just to give you that have not heard, um, I was listening to an interview with Bill Clinton by uh, Wolf Blitzer, and he told, the last question he asked him through the interview, Everybody wants to know, how did you lose all your weight? And he said, well, I'm not trying to lose any weight, but I've had so many cardiac episodes, I didn't want to have any more of those. So he uh, mentioned some books that he read. One was The China Study um, by Dr. Colin Campbell and his son. Another was uh, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. And I just kind of paused. I did not know you could actually reverse heart disease by diet. And the other one was, was a book uh, by Dean Ornish. And so I went and got my husband and replayed it. We ordered the books right away. My husband read the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease book and he said, I'm not touching meat again. I'm not going to use dairy at all in my diet and we're not cooking with oil. 
So I thought, okay, well, I'll do a little bit of this. And we ate a Mediterranean diet. We thought it was pretty healthy. Um, after about a week, I read the book, and immediately that was it. And it's not just heart disease, it's cancers, it's a whole host of other diseases that the typical American diet contributes to. So um, I decided if I was going to do this, I wanted to learn as much about this lifestyle as possible. So I enrolled on online a course with Cornell University, and um, I got a certificate in plant-based nutrition by Dr. Campbell, who wrote the China study. And all the exemplars in the movement, Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Barnard, Dr. McDougall, they all had various lectures. It was so informative. And one of the things they wanted people to do is to uh, pass this knowledge on to other people. I am not a medical expert at all, but I can cook, and so um, what I decided to do was to share my cooking love and passion um, on this website because a lot of people think we just eat salads and I assure you that's not the case. We eat a whole host, a lot of the same dishes you eat, but they're just plant-based. So today I'm going to show you a recipe that um, I did with a cooking class with some great nieces and one of most kids' recipes that they love is macaroni and cheese. So this is my version of macaroni and cheese. Um, and this is just to show you guys on my website. This is a gallery page. I try to have a picture of every recipe. There's a few that I don't, but 99% have a picture. And then you can click on that particular recipe, and um, then you've got the recipe there. But you can at least see what the recipe looks like before you make it, because not sometimes it's hard to envision what something would look like. So today we're going to do creamy green macaroni, and then um, I'm going to also do some cucumber slices. That's just something basic. Just to get the prep going, I went ahead and started with um, cauliflower and carrots. I asked the girls, what is your favorite vegetables? One was carrots, cauliflower, and the other was broccoli. So you want to cut that up really fine and boil it in your water. We're going to make macaroni. So this is my pasta water for the macaroni. And it might look kind of gross right now, but I've been cooking the, just to save time the carrots and the cauliflower in that water. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the um, broccoli. And basically, normally when you eat vegetables, we don't like it really mushy. But in this particular recipe, you want it mushy because we're going to make a sauce out of it. So this I'm going to. Um, let me turn this down. Um, this will cook for just, broccoli doesn't take that long to cook, so just a couple minutes we'll go ahead and cook that. But basically the gist of this is we're going to cook vegetables and we're going to, normally I put this in a food processor, but today just to save time and it's, I have a big heavy food processor, I brought out my immersion blender. And so we're going to use that to make the actual sauce. And if you guys don't have one of these, these are great. I use it all the time for just about everything. I'm going to take that off. Angela, if a person wanted to, could they just use the California blend of sure. frozen vegetables? Sure. And you can use any vegetable that you like. Um, you know, I put this on the kid-friendly site, but it's, I think it's good just as, you know, I think most people would find it okay. If you want more of a cheesy flavor, um, there's a product called nutritional yeast, and you can use that in with, it would give it more of the yellow flavor, and that would work fine as well. So what I do, I, I try to cut this up as fine as I can, because it'll cook a lot quicker. Um, pasta, you want to use whole grain pasta whenever you cook. There's all kinds of different pastas out there, but I like whole grain pasta. It's the best. I, I really like this brand, Berea. It always turns out pretty well, so this is a good brand to use. One book I would recommend also that I didn't mention, it's called The Starch Solution by Dr. John McDougall. Um, starch kind of gets a bad name. Carbs, there's good carbs and bad carbs. And um, potatoes are an excellent source of nutrition. Uh, whole grains, an excellent source of nutrition. 
Rice. So I would definitely recommend that book for anybody that's interested in adopting or leaning more towards a plant-based diet. And then the other thing we've done up here, I've got some tomatoes. And we're going to just use that as a garnish. Basically, I just went ahead and chopped tomatoes. I put a little bit of salt, and I'm going to put some, just sprinkle on some dried basil. And this will just be as a garnish. And a lot of times when I make meals, I just like this as a garnish. It's, it tastes good, and it looks pretty. It gives you some nice contrast with your dish. And you can do that ahead of time and just let it sit out a little bit. So let's see where we are. I have beans that we're going to use, cannellini beans. That'll add some extra protein. I think one of the most common questions that my husband and I get, where do you get your protein? But, and I wasn't aware of this either, but vegetables have a lot of protein. Beans have a lot of protein. You can get all the protein you need from a plant-based diet. Calcium is another um, comment. Where do you get your calcium? There's a lot of calcium in green vegetables, dark, leafy green vegetables. You want to have a lot of color in your diet. Um, we don't drink dairy, but we use almond milk. And the almond milk actually has more calcium than dairy, than cow's milk. So that's what we use. have to make sure this sometimes I shut this off inadvertently so I want to make sure so this is getting pretty well first time I made this I'm like I don't know but it, it actually the kids really liked it and you can Nancy and I were talking she said well could you use peas peas would work just as well you can use any vegetable that you like anything would work fine for this So, this is just about ready. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the cauliflower and carrots that I cooked earlier. And again, I cut those in really small pieces so they would cook, cook quicker. And I don't know if you guys can see, um, if you look up above, but I just put a can of cannellini beans and don't drain these beans because you want that extra liquid. We're going to actually make a sauce out of this. So I'm going to pour that in with this. And now we're going to take the broccoli and add that in as well. And the other nice thing about using the pasta water for this dish to cook the vegetables in. All the nutrients that were released while cooking, you're going to have that in the pasta. So nothing really goes to waste. And the other thing is we're going to use some of that pasta water um, after the pasta is done cooking in this sauce. And the reason, you could use the water now, but it would be better to use the pasta water. Can you hear OK? It would be better to use the pasta water because the starch makes a nicer sauce. So we're going to go ahead and it's not quite boiling, but it should be. This cooks about six minutes, so I'm going to have Nancy keep an eye on that. So what I'm going to do, let's set food. Uh, all right. There we go. So you've got Right. And your vegetables. How many cups of vegetables? Um, what I used, a very small head of cauliflower, about a cup of carrots, and um, one crown of the broccoli. So you can use whatever you like. This is just a fun way, though, to incorporate more vegetables into a meal that kids eat all the time. Okay, hang that this way. We'll add the garlic. And 
And that was just one large clove. Again, if you want more, go ahead and add that. I've got about a fourth of a cup of the honey mustard. And I would use a milder mustard in, in this. Do you think did that taste strong? I didn't a taste it, okay. but I'm, I think it'll be fine. So I'm going to quick just blend that together a little bit more. And then we will add some more pasta water because we want it more like a sauce. Um, so I just want to get it a little more, a little more room there. smells pretty fragrant, the mustard, so hopefully this might be a little stronger than what I've used, so uh, hopefully it's not too overwhelming. So how much time do we have left on this? How much time do we have on our six minutes? Three. Three? Three? Minutes? Okay. okay. So while we're doing that, Can I'm, clean up a little yeah, this, right. that'd be great. Okay. I'm going to show you something that we eat a lot at our house. Um, it's just a quick way, if you don't, you're tired, but you, want, you know you want to get some extra greens in with whatever you're fixing. We eat a lot of times cucumber slices at our house. Oh, I do need a cutting board, sorry. A cutting board? Yeah. Here you go. Is this okay? Oh, yeah. I think Cat's Carol's. Here you go. Just, okay. okay. Here we go. So basically what we do, anybody can do it. Everybody loves this. And you don't have to do it fancy. Um, Sorry. Okay. So you're just going to cut off one end of your cucumber. And you can slice it regular if you want. Peel it. But today I thought we would just do something a little more fun. And I've got this tool that you can use. And you can kind of make it like a flower or whatever shape you want. If you were really creative, I suppose you could make a shamrock shape. <laughs> I'm probably not that creative. You can do that also with the end of a peeler. A lot of vegetable peelers have a sharp edge and yeah, you can. So we're gonna peel that, oops. And then just slice the cucumbers. They look kind of pretty this way. Can I arrange them? That would be great. All right. Spread them out on the plate. Those can all go. See, they just look kind of pretty. Just very pretty. Things festive are just more fun, aren't they? They are. Oh, that's our, uh, Is that our six, six minutes? minutes? Okay. Right. Can I finish doing the tray of these? Sure. For you, Angela? So basically, go ahead and do that, okay. and then we'll get that. I'm going to drain the pasta. Well, actually, I want to do that a separate way. Um, yep, yeah, I'm going to use some of that pasta water. So I need a spoon. It's it's hard to cook in someone else's <laughs> cook, kitchen. All right. Um, Can we just or a use cup. Or a cup. Well, I need something to pour some of the water in. Uh, that's not going to. Here, I'll, I've got something you okay. can use. Okay. All right, you take that. How much? Like a coffee cup? That would be perfect. That's all, all right. I need. There you go. Okay. okay. There's a little parsley. Okay, so I'm going to just use some of this water because if you can look right now at this. It's pretty thick, and you could use it like that, but I want it just a little bit more saucy. Pasta water is, I think, one of the best secrets for making really good sauce, especially spaghetti sauce. Or if you want just like a light sauce to pour over some vegetables and pasta, always keep your pasta water. It works great with some lemon and white wine, garlic, some fresh herbs. See, it's a little creamier this way. I might put just a little bit more in there. Oh, we're getting a little pasta in there, but that's okay. It's going in there anyway. So on your recipe, does it say about how much water to add, or do you um, just kind of eyeball it? I kind of eyeball it, but you can, I think I might have said maybe about two cups or so, but just kind of eyeball it to whatever you think. Okay, so I'm gonna drain this now. I think that'll work okay. 
And then I usually try to keep a little bit of the pasta water still in with the pasta. Gonna, oh, I want that off. Right. Yep. Then I'm going to pour that back in the pan. Then we're going to add the sauce on top of the pasta. I have that right. white one. The white one. The white, yeah. Uh, thanks. There you go. Okay. It's, it has a little bit stronger mustard smell, so I hope it's not too intense, but I think you'll get the idea though. So then you're just going to mix that up. And with the carrots, it kind of gives it kind of the orange color of like what you would have with macaroni and cheese. Did you use honey? Thanks. I did not. Who said that? That is in the recipe. <laughs> the girls liked it a little bit sweeter, so I think I added like maybe one or two tablespoons of honey, so we'll just add that in, and that might help. Some of that but I think down. it's in the recipe, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I just did choose enough, right? That'd be great. Yep. Then I'm just going to put a little bit of salt and pepper on. I'm going to turn that off. I thought it. I probably have it. There's some salt. Can I get rid of this? Yes. Thank you. And we'll put some more pepper on there. And that is the creamy green macaroni. What do you guys think? Does that look like something you would eat or your children would eat? Okay. And then I just want to show you with the cucumbers what we do. This is uh, lemon pepper. You can buy lemon pepper that's already uh, ground up. I just happen to have a grinder for the kind that I like. You can add dill wheat on top of your cucumbers if you like that. Garlic salt. I think the lemon pepper has enough flavoring that it works well, but it's it's a nice treat any time of the year and you can get some extra greens in. And then what we'll do when we serve it, you can, if you like, you can put some of this on as a garnish. Anybody have any questions about this dish? All right, thank you. All right. Okay, dish number one. You will one. get two. Two to go. Where should I put this? Uh, let's just leave it right there. Okay. Can we cover it? Um, Is sure. All right, so we'll keep that warm. Let me get this out. And we'll out. switch. Oh, I go. love all these green things. Now we can, we they can. They look so nutritious and good. I'm gonna unplug this because we don't need that dry one. All right, so I'm going to be showing you a massaged kale salad. Now I did my best to give you a recipe, but it's hard. It's hard because I'm used to just going and I want this much kale and yeah, a little bit, about this much lemon juice and this much, you know. So it's, uh, it's hard. I tried and I experimented several times to try to give you a good recipe. I want to show you how to do your kale. Angela showed me this first. It's very, very easy and fun. You feel so strong when you rip that <laughs> stuff off. It just feels so good. Is this all right so, Yes, actually, I've got. Where's my? There's my bowl up there, full of stuff. You want to get it for me, or I guess, yeah, you don't have to climb over. I'm just going to cut this into bite-sized pieces, not getting it real small, because once we massage this, you'll see what happens. Take a look here, and notice the volume what we have here. Okay. Decide how much salad you want, really. Do I want this much? Yeah, this is going to feed our crowd, and it will leave enough for me for, to have for lunch today. Okay, and I love kale salad. Um, put in, oh, for this much, I probably am going to get most of the lemon juice that would come off of a, out of one lemon. Okay, but I, I'm going to hold it just a little bit back because I don't want to kill you guys with lemon. When you get used to lemon, oh, you just love it. Now, I am putting... Um, seasoned garlic salt in here. Some people like to use sea salt or just regular iodized salt. It's not a big deal. You just And then you just get your hands in there and start to massage. Can I have your other bowl? I'm going to put part of it in the other bowl. This is a little much, kind of overflowing here. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to do half at a time if that's okay. all right. And, and an avocado? 
Oh. Actually, what I'm going to let you do, okay. Nancy, if you don't mind, you massage, massage. that one <laughs> while I'm doing this one. I get a little help here. Now, what we're going to do for the dressing <laughs> is we take, mm. I'm going to borrow your spoon you here. Ahead. We take um, an avocado and use the natural oils that's in the avocado for the dressing. That, along with the lemon juice and the garlic salt, just makes it absolutely <coughs> fabulous. Sorry about gonna, hitting my bowl. Can you see this? Not massaged, massaged. Look at the color. Can you see the color difference? Just as that uh, acidity starts breaking it down and it brings out the color. Yes. Okay. I'm going to give you some <laughs> avocado to massage in there with it. Actually, here, maybe I should make it easier on you and cut oh, it up I a little bit. Oh, I got it, girl. You got it? It's good. All right. Do you guys know how to buy avocados? You ever gone to the store and you come home with this avocado you paid a dollar and a half for? and you open it up and it's black inside. Isn't that disappointing? Makes you not want to buy it at all. Well, the secret is, and Nancy knows this already, you buy it, excuse me, you buy them as green and hard as you can. Take them home, put them on the kitchen counter. And when you, you know, wait a couple days and you notice the, the peel is turning a little black, then you know it's getting ready. So give it just a very, very gentle squeeze. And if it gives a little bit under your fingers, it's red. Do you have anything Good to job. add to that? I'm wondering, I recently learned that pears ripen from the inside out. They do. And I believe avocados are likewise. I think they do. They, they ripen from the seed and out towards the skin. So if you press it and it's very soft on the outside, it's probably going to be brown when you get closer to the seed. Yeah. So. All right. Okay, I'm going to let you put all that together, okay. Nancy, if you don't mind. And I'm going to get some of this other stuff ready. Okay. Now, you know when you're... So, do you want this in there? Why don't you put this in there, because it's right. a bigger bowl. Okay. It will work better for us. Right. Um, as you are going and moving to a plant-based diet, you're going to want to think about things that make our food appealing and pretty. You know, it's a different way of thinking about food. So I'm, I'm going to make this green salad pretty by giving it some contrast green. And this is very, this leaf lettuce is mild, so it, it makes it get a little more mild. Because some people object to the strong flavors of the, the kale. So add a little bit of color contrast and a little bit of milder flavor. Um, one reason for massaging the salad is that it takes out a lot of that sharp flavor that kale naturally has, makes it sweet and yummy good. Okay, then we're going to add uh, another kind of shape, texture, flavor, by slicing some cucumbers in here. And this is going to be my um, kale salad base. Now, because everybody likes different things in their salad, um, I brought several different toppings here, and I'm going to let you put your salad together, okay? So I have the base. You can put it together. If it's me eating this salad, mmm, yummy. Don't your, I'm going to add some more of these. Okay. <laughs> A lot more of this. So I'm going to put this over here. Do you need it? I think we ought to have it. Right. <laughs> I think we ought to have it. Decision yeah. Made. Okay. So this is your yummy base to the salad. Can everybody see that? Yeah. See, you have different greens, you have different texture, and you can add peppers and, and onions. I didn't put onions on that list, oh did I? Goodness. I didn't put citrus, Nancy. Yeah. That can make it so good. Mangoes chopped up. I would even try some pineapple in this. It's so yummy and so good. So we're gonna put this over here, and when you come through line, add your toppings. Whichever things you like, if you wanna try it all, try it all, but enjoy. And we've got one more. Becky's gonna do a smoothie. And we're gonna, whoops, ready to eat. Get this off there. So we are going to do a green smoothie here, and the ingredients are almond milk, pineapple, frozen bananas, 
When you freeze bananas, it's a lot easier to peel them before you freeze them. So when they start turning black, take the peels off, wrap them up, stick them in the freezer. They're really good frozen. They're really good just with some milk poured on them too. You don't have to use them in a smoothie. Um, and then we are also going to put a little bit of kale and some cinnamon in the smoothie. Kale. Kale. More kale. <laughs> So we're going to start out with two cups of vanilla almond milk and make sure you shake this before you use it. And I'm going to warn you ahead of time this blender is very, very loud so those of you sitting up front may want to cover your ears when I turn it on. Two frozen bananas and these ladies so nicely froze these for me this morning. And the recipe calls for one and a half to two cups of frozen pineapple. This has three cups in it, so I'm just going to guesstimate and dump some in there. That's the right way to cook. That's make the way to cook, <laughs> yeah. That's how I always cook. So if this smoothie isn't sweet enough for you, you can always add some honey to it. So we have honey up here. I think we'll let everybody add their own if they want it. Should I just put all the pineapple in? Okay. <laughs> Cooking on the fly. And then the kale. We were already showed how to take it off. Should I put all this in here too? Or should I just put half of it in? How many do you have? Four. Okay. So Pour it all in the blender, put the lid on so it doesn't go all over the place. That's very important. <laughs> so then when you get the kale ground up, it actually does turn green into a green smoothie. Yes. It looks gorgeous. So if you want this icier, you can add some ice cubes to it. If you think it's a little too thick, you can add some almond milk to it. I think this may be a little too thick, so I'm going to dump some more almond milk in it. But I think, should we start sure. people yeah, coming sure. through the line? And probably because we added the extra I know. Sample. We've gone over just a little bit um, in our time. But if you guys want to come on up while Becky's thinning it down. Oh, what are you adding? You're cinnamon. This is a dash of cinnamon, <laughs> and it is on the recipe. I just didn't put it in before. Okay. So we'll have um, just a variety of things to sample. Oh, we have to get back to 